Now, there's a claim floating around about nuclear energy, and it's all about women. The ABC recently published an article that says the biggest difference of opinion on nuclear breaks along gender lines. And they cited polling from Redbridge that found just 7% of women strongly agree that the nuclear ban should be lifted. Compare that to 24% of men who believe the nuclear ban should be lifted. So another way of saying it, there's a net negative response of minus 29 for women when it comes to nuclear power, and there's a net positive response of 26 for men. So is this right, that men are open to nuclear energy and women are not? Jasmine Diab is the president of Women in Nuclear Australia, and she's on the line right now from WA. Jasmine, good morning. Good morning, Ben. How are you? I'm very well. Is that right? Women are against nuclear power, men are for it? So I think what has actually happened here is because Australia has had a ban in place for so long, a lot of women have never been exposed to nuclear technology what it means and what it does for us. So instead of being able to have the time to investigate, uh, we err on the side of caution. And uh, misinformation about nuclear has led to a lot of people not liking nuclear who just aren't informed. So it might be that mother instinct of hearing, oh, this could be a danger and therefore I want to put protection first and just say no. Yeah, but a lot of women will side with the emotive argument. However, there have been amazing case studies in the US where women who are educated in nuclear, they formed a group called Mothers for Nuclear with the end state of being able to um, prevent the closure of nuclear power plants because it is better for the climate they were living in in California. And so it is how do we, as a nuclear community, address these arguments to allow women to be more included in the discussion, understand the technology and what its benefits are for us and our children and families as we look to grow into the future. So is that the point of your group, Women in Nuclear Australia? So Women in Nuclear Australia is predominantly a group of female professionals and their allies in the industry. It originally started as a global entity about the communication of nuclear and enticing more women into the field and we are trying to showcase what we do in each of our roles to um, inform more Australians about a there are women in the nuclear community and b there are so many fantastic things nuclear science and technology does for us every single day that a lot of us just aren't aware of. You were a commanding officer in the Australian Army. You have a Master of Nuclear Engineering from the University of New South Wales and you're the Australian Managing Director of Global Nuclear Security Partners. So you're an expert. Why don't you answer some of these concerns? Chris Bowen, the Energy Minister, says nuclear power is too expensive. Yeah, that's often the argument people hide behind and it's unfortunate that a lot of the modelling on nuclear uh, has been skewed to fit economic models. Nuclear, I like to compare as an expensive steak dinner out compared to fast food being some of the cheaper, quicker uh, technologies. You will get power long into the future. So you're talking power plants that live for generations that have operating costs that are much lower than a solar farm, wind turbine, Um, So I think when we look at cost modelling, we need to look at the full system architecture, not just the capital costs of building, because that will skew the economics over the long term. And and on the build, Chris Bowen's always making the point too that they take too long to build if you're going to build these nuclear power plants. Yeah, but my argument often back is if we don't start building now, then we're still going to have this argument in 10 years' time. We will need energy in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Trying to solve a short-term need now with quick builds is not going to solve those long-term energy requirements. So uh, lifting the ban is the first step to allow us to do the analysis to see where are nuclear power plants suited, what kind of plants are suited, and what would the actual economics look like for Australia. And if we don't have the opportunity to do that now then are we going to continue having these arguments in 10 years' time again and have wasted the last decade?
We are talking to Jasmine Diab, the president of Women in Nuclear Australia. What about the claim that they seem to have backed away from a little bit, but we've heard it a thousand times before, that nuclear power plants are dangerous. And you can see at the moment there's a scare campaign happening where they're saying, all right, here are some of the locations. This is where they're going to build the nuclear power plant. The only aim out of saying all of that is to try and frighten people. Yeah, it's really disappointing to see that because nuclear technologies have been powering countries for for decades. I mean, the US, who invented civilian nuclear power, started in the 50s and 60s and uh, have run safely. The technology is a proven technology. There are towns that love the fact that they have a nuclear power plant there because it provides stable jobs for the long term. Um, So this scare campaign that's come out on social media is actually really irresponsible, um, especially because Australia is also embarking on a pretty big program to build a nuclear workforce to support our defence forces. So I think that misinformation is not helping us build this credible workforce and build our standing as a nuclear nation. So what would you say to Chris Bowen and Anthony Albanese as they run around the country trying to scare everyone? I think they need to actually be educated on what nuclear technology is. And you can ideologically be opposed to it. I completely understand that. But you can't deny the facts that have been proven for decades. Um, That just makes it a really illegitimate argument. So if it is an ideological argument, say that. Be honest. If you don't like it, just say you don't like it. Don't go flinging mud at an industry that is trying to grow because Australia needs it to support other endeavours. All right, we'll see whether any other women come across to the other side of the argument. And obviously we're waiting on announcements from Peter Dutton any week now on where the locations are going to be. I know we've got a rough idea, but he's still to actually put a pin in the map to say it's going to be here, there and there. Jasmine Diab, I didn't know about the Women in Nuclear Australia group until today, but I'm glad we found out about you and let's talk again. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for allowing me to come on and chat. Not at all. Jasmine Diab, the president of Women in Nuclear Australia.